Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to have a very quick look through the month of July. Some of you may have already seen a quick look at the coming month of July in Irish on this YouTube channel. So if you go back a few videos, you will see an Irish language video talking about the night sky coming in July. All of my Irish language videos are subtitled. So even if you are not an Irish language speaker, you should still be able to uh, avail of, enjoy, um, keep up with uh, the information that I'm giving in the Irish language videos, thanks to the English language subtitles. But just in case, and just in case for anyone who didn't see it at all. Of course, if you didn't see it at all, I, I recommend that you go back and take a look. But we are going to very quickly see here, Mercury is practically impossible to see here on the 1st of July. And we've already discussed how Mercury at its greatest elongation, which it's reaching there on the 4th of July, Mercury at its greatest elongation is fainter than Mercury when it's close to behind the Sun. As it comes around in front of the Sun, it gets harder to see. And even though it is further from the Sun, it's not as far from the horizon. And that also makes a big difference to how visible objects are. If we take a look at Mercury here, we'll come back a few days and just take a look at the atmosphere. So here, Mercury is reduced to about one by about 11 nearly 12 air masses and that's because it's just that little bit higher in the sky as we move forward we'll see mercury kind of loop around come down lower in the sky and here we can see just after the elongation reduced to about three by 19 air masses so we're looking through many more air masses when we're looking close to the horizon and that affects the brightness of the object but even without the atmosphere here we go, we can see there Mercury at magnitude, you know, nearly 0.6, but if we come back, there we can see Mercury going into negative magnitudes, negative a third, and those negative numbers are brighter. Negative means brighter in the sky. Oh, we can actually see, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a cluster of stars just behind Mercury there. Um, I will bring up the object labels. There we go, the beehive cluster of stars. Uh, so that is a clear cluster of stars. Occasionally in very dark skies with a telescope or binoculars, you can tell when there are more stars close together than you may expect. There's Mars, much more reliable over the course of the month. But we can see as we get later in the month, Mercury does end up very, very low, but we are also moving away from the solstice. So by the very end of July, we can see it's much, much darker here at almost 11 o'clock, even though Mars ends up quite low in the sky. Because the sky is getting darker earlier, it's appearing earlier but we can see that it's still quite close there at 10. If we move back, it's not even visible at 10 o'clock earlier in the month. So we're moving past the solstice. This is giving us more night time, although it's not necessarily going to make us cooler. The summer heat will likely continue through July and into August thanks to the sun heating up the earth, uh, heating up the rocks and the water that are here on the surface of the earth. They do get hotter and then they have to cool down again. So as we come into winter, as the days get shorter and the days are going to start getting shorter as of uh, the 1st of July, or really as of the 22nd of June, the days are getting shorter, but it's going to take a while for that excess heat to radiate away into the night sky. It's going to take a while for us to cool back down. We're going to come around quickly to the morning because there are several planets up in the morning over the course of July and much, much easier to see than either of the planets that are up in the evening. So we can see Venus quite low in the sky, comparable to how low Mars is, but so much brighter. It's so much more visible. And we can see as we move through July there, Saturn rising nice and high into the sky. So this means as we come to the end of July, and we'll come back to the end of July there, as we come to the end of July, we're going to start seeing Saturn earlier and earlier. So we can see here, yeah, before midnight, uh, just about half 11, there's Saturn starting to come up. So we're going to start getting Saturn in the evening as we move through July. As we come back around to the morning, you will see Jupiter and Venus coming up together. You may remember, uh, you may remember from the previous video that Jupiter and Venus and 
the brightest star Sirius are all going to be in the sky together once we get through to August but not quite while we're still in July. If we move a little bit earlier in July we can see here by the middle of July Jupiter's getting pretty hard to see. It's barely risen very close to the horizon by the time the sky gets bright enough to block it out. Venus of course staying with us for much much longer. Uh, we can see Venus there disappearing at a little after 5, at 20 past 5 from the city. Of course our view is going to be significantly better from the countryside as it always is. So we will hop out to the countryside. Doesn't seem to make a huge difference here uh, first thing in the morning. If we come back a little bit you'll see that Jupiter is a bit brighter and a bit easier to see. And if we move later again Venus should hold on for just a little bit longer. Yeah we can see there uh, quarter to six so it's holding on for an extra 15-20 minutes or so. That is one of the many, many differences, one of the many, many improvements that we get if we head out into the countryside. We can also much more clearly see the high aids there with Venus because they're so low in the sky and so close to the glow of sunrise. It's more difficult to make them out from the city. The Pleiades, of course, look like a nice cluster of stars there, whereas only uh, two or three of the seven sisters are often visible from the city. We can see there we're close enough to the middle of the month so the moon is going to be close enough to full. Uh, we'll double check uh, what night is our actual full moon. We can see here we're just coming back towards uh, coming towards midnight on the clock a little bit past physical midnight or a little bit before physical midnight. Uh, here we go 99.8% on the 11th and then moving into the uh, 12th it'll stay uh, or moving back from the 11th to the 10th it'll stay at around that 99.8% but we can see the moon is still very very low in the sky there at its highest even though we are past the solstice we're still very much in summer time so the sun will still be high during the day with the moon and the planets being low at night or at least low in the middle of the night. We can see as we come up to morning time there, Saturn's position is significantly higher. And that's because the Earth is turning around to look up at the ecliptic. Uh, when we're facing towards the sun during the summer, we're tilted towards the ecliptic, so it looks higher in the sky. And as the Earth turns around, we end up tilting away from the ecliptic, so it ends up looking much lower in the sky, as we can see there at around one half one. We can see the summer triangle still nice and prominent, and it's going to be with us all night long. And we can see here, how much easier it is to see Scorpius. We can see a lot more of Scorpius there and Sagittarius and this is partly to do with the tilts and the angles at which we're seeing things as well. It was harder to see that bottom part of the Scorpion and the teapot when we were looking at them when we were seeing them in the early morning rather than early in the evening. So a few months ago in springtime before the summer solstice or at least in early summer. So we've got quite a lot of planets and stars visible in the sky there even on the night of the full moon. Of course getting the full moon out of the way makes the Milky Way a bit more visible so the Milky Way is there. Uranus is out there, Neptune is out here so once we get around to morning time we are going to have a lot of planets in the sky all together. In fact if we get Mercury back in the sky which we will do uh, once we're through a little bit later in August yeah so we have almost every planet that is visible minus Mars plus the two planets that are invisible to the eye Uranus and Neptune out there. So we're still going to have plenty of chances to see plenty of planets. In June or in July we're only going to get to see a few of them of course and Jupiter only joins in really once we're through to about the middle of the month. So we will have to be a bit patient with the planets especially with things like Mars being quite difficult to see, Mercury being difficult to see even though it's at its greatest elongation. Luckily we do have a couple of other things going on and again I mentioned these in the previous Irish language video but to quickly cover them again here I will move up to the end of the month just to get the same a group of them in the sky. Uh, I didn't know the Eter Aradonids were running in July actually. I don't think they're peaking there though. No, they're not peaking until August. But we can see one of the biggest meteor showers, the Perseids, that's coming up in August. So even though its um, entire activity covers from mid-July through to the end of August, its peak is pretty early in August, early mid-August. So that's the only night we're really going to get close to those hundreds we can see here. We should be expecting zero from them this early in its run of activity. 
the southern delta aquarids are aquarids they're the ones that are going to be peaking right at the end on the 30th of the month so we can see them getting up to 25 24 getting up to 25 24 you'll probably see nine or ten in the sky uh simply because they are a little difficult to observe but we can add to that the background 10 you know or four or five according to this uh four or five coming from the anti-helion another few coming from some other points in the sky there's always some meteors falling through the sky so with a background rate of roughly 10 plus another 20 or so coming from the southern delta acarids plus i believe it is nope not the gamma draconids but the Alpha Capricornids adding another maybe four or five to the sky. So we could be looking at, you know, 30, 40 meteors an hour, but that is on top of the 10 or so we always get. So if you've never seen a meteor, well, 10 or so an hour isn't a lot. You really have to look at the sky for quite a while. Going out during these showers will vastly improve your chances. And if you don't get to see something at the end of July with the Southern Delta Aquarids, we've got the Perseids coming up in August, which are a much more reliable shower. So just a quick look at July, uh, quickly going over the things that we covered in the Irish language video for anyone who didn't catch it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like it. If you enjoy this kind of content, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I just hit 500 subscribers recently and I'm eager to continue growing that number. You can also read some of this information on my website, queenbeanscontent.ie. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you back here next time.